Hello and welcome. You're watching the morning news on CNN News 18, and I'm Shilpa Ratnam. Our top focus today: the international news that got everybody talking. Amid threats and warnings, unit United States House Representative Nancy Pelosi touched down at Taipei last evening. Today, she is set to meet the President of Taiwan. After which, she will fly out of the island. Her visit to Taiwan has triggered a showdown between two superpowers. The Chinese government issued several warnings against Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, calling it a violation of the One China principle. China also has warned the U.S. of dire consequences as well. Meanwhile, upon her touchdown, Pelosi, in her tweet, said that the visit honors America's unwavering commitment to supporting Taiwan's vibrant democracy. Member of the Armed Services Committee, the Foreign Affairs Committee, and other committees of jurisdiction in this regard. He also, as a former member of the State Department, he's a diplomat, and so he's teaching us to speak more diplomatically. <laughs> 那另外，如果是说这个所有的这个议题，呃，都要把它连接在一起，包括不论是安全或者外交或者经济的领域的话，那我们来自 New Jersey 的这个 Andy Kim 的议员，他就能够扮演非常重要的角色，因为他不论不但是这个外委会以及军委会的这个成员，那同时他之前也曾经在国务院工作，担任外交官，所以我觉得他可以呃教我们大家怎么样。In terms of as you see, our, our delegation has what we call heft. Heft. Uh, they they have a, a view of economy and security and governance. They have knowledge of the issues. They think in a strategic way about how to work together. They came here. We all did. To listen, to learn from you as to how we can go forward together. 那呃，刚经透过刚才的这个介绍，相信这个副院长可以了解，今天我们所来的这个访团是非常的有能力以及有分量的，不论是在这个经济安全或者是战略。思考等等的议题，他们都能够分享许多宝贵的意见。那今天我们来的另外一个目的，特别重要的也是要倾听啊各位的意见，以及向各位有多多的学习。In in terms of governance, we commend Taiwan for being one of the freest societies in the world for your success in addressing the COVID interest issue, which is a health issue, a security issue, an economic issue, and a governance issue. We congratulate you. For that, and as we continue to work together, we want you to know how proud we are of of Sandra. She told me just to address her as Sandra, <laughs> director, uh, and, and she has our confidence, and we're very proud of her leadership. 那在这里的方面，我们非常高兴知道台湾是全世界最自由的呃这个社会之一。那在许多的方面都有非常领先的成就，包括在这个防疫的这个疫情方面更是突出。那这个防疫不只是这个工位的议题，同时也。Now we're joined by my colleague Abhishek Jha with more on this. Good morning to you, Abhishek. It has been quite an exciting night that's been unfolding. China has warned of severe repercussions, and already they have intensified their military presence around the waters of Taiwan. They're responding to Pelosi's visit with war games in Taiwan waters. Uh, of course, Shilpa, there had been a repeated warning from Chinese side that they will uh, do everything to stop Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, and in fact, they did mobilize a lot of uh, their uh, vessels. Uh, there was uh, aerial activity also in uh, uh, in uh, Taiwan's uh, air identification zone. Uh, also, we had uh, learned that uh, USA also did uh, lift some of its fighter aircraft from Japan. So, a lot of uh, aerial and maritime movement were going around Taiwan Strait uh, while Nancy Pelosi was about to land in Taipei. But finally, she did land, and it was. Uh, quite a visit that uh, has happened uh, in a very long time of 25 years uh, since the last U.S. Congress uh, uh, speaker had visited uh, Taiwan. And we know that uh, today uh, Nancy Pelosi has a very uh, very packed schedule. Uh, she is going to uh, meet uh, various senior leaders uh, and she's also addressing the parliament. 
and now uh, they are both talking about uh, how USA and Taiwan's relationship can be taken forward. We know that Taiwan is also a democratically elected government, and USA and Taiwan they uh, kind of share the same value system in terms of governance, and they do believe in freedom of expression and everything that is not there in uh, China. So uh, there has been a lot of uh, tussle going on between USA and China as to uh, who should. All right, now we also have our CNN News 18 managing editor Zaka Jacob who interacting with a panel of experts on what Pelosi's visit means for Taiwan as well as China listener. Not the first time a U.S. House speaker is visiting Taiwan, but this time around there was so much drama around this and it continues even now, even uh, just before coming into the studio, the Chinese Foreign Ministry putting out a very, very terse statement taking exception to uh, Nancy Pelosi's visit. What could likely be the outcome uh, of this visit in as much as do you see uh, China stepping up on, on military action? Yes, rhetoric has gone through the roof, but will there be commensurate military action against Taiwan? Well, thank you. Uh, certainly the tensions are going up. Uh, China is, uh, you know, signaling its its uh, displeasure uh, with Nancy Pelosi's visit, which, you know, I have to remind people that uh, it, this signals no change in U.S. policy. The U.S. continues to support the One China policy, uh, be guided by the Taiwan's Relations Act. Uh, so there's there's really no change in policy. Uh, there were differences about whether this uh, visit should even go forward, as you know, the president. Uh, signal that he did not think it should go for, that the military objected to it. I read today Newt Gingrich, who was House Speaker in yeah. 1997 and visited Taiwan, said that the Chinese told him not to go. We said, I'm going. And that was it. Now, like you said, it's a whole different situation because we have the Chinese Communist Party Congress coming up. And Xi Jinping cannot look as a weak person. And that's why we're seeing China already in the last hour announcing a huge military exercise um, around the coastlines of Taiwan. So the Chinese at this point, from what we're seeing at least, are going to show some kind of military force around Taiwan. But I don't think at least for now, they will go further than that. So they're going to show they're the boss in the area. They have decided uh, uh, to do these exercises. There might be several more steps. We saw the U.S. administration saying yesterday that we might see China firing into the Taiwanese Straits, something that was in the last time only in 1995. So um, at this point, what the U.S. at least it was predicting that we will see some kind of military steps, but the China won't go further than that. Meaning we won't see, for example, an operation against Taiwanese areas or territory. How much mind games is going on here? And and the question that everybody really wants to know is: beyond all this propaganda videos and these mind games that China is playing, will it actually cross that threshold? Will it actually cross? That, that Rubicon of taking military action against Taiwan, which, as I understand, there's never been a full-fledged military operation that Beijing has ever undertaken against Taiwan uh, since, since 1949. Well, so, so this, that, I think, is the real uh, question. Uh, uh, Andrew this. Liang, please. That question is to Andrew Liang. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I think that the, uh, the Taiwan question, of course, is an extremely um, important uh, for uh, President Xi and, and for Beijing uh, in general, um, and indeed for the whole of the Chinese people, because the unification has always been on the minds uh, of all the Chinese people, um, not only in the mainland, but uh, throughout the uh, Chinese diaspora. And in fact, it is part of the Xi Jinping's China dream. Now, of course, the United States has been uh, saying that it's honoring the One China uh, principle, um, but of course, uh, there is the Taiwan Relations Act uh, authorizing the, uh, uh, the United States uh, to supply arms to Taiwan, to yeah. help Taiwan defend itself. But on the other hand, um, 
the American uh, promise uh, of holding fast to the chi one China principle is seen uh, to be um, a hollow promise in the sense that uh, the United States seems to be uh, giving a lot of elbow room for, chi for Taiwan as if Taiwan was a separate country by feuding uh, more and more senior officials to visit Taiwan and perhaps cajoling uh, Americans' allies to do the same. Both sides have landed them in a situation themselves in a situation that neither wanted to be. Uh, but uh, the Speaker of the House is the Speaker of the House, and I guess this is up about her final term, and she would like to go out with some glory. And therefore, uh, she has done what she thinks is correct and what many people think is correct, because uh, she is, after all, not going there for a defense treaty or anything. Uh, Chinese could well react by some small intrusion into territorial waters of, Tada, of, the, of the uh, Taiwan, or they can fly a fire aircraft somewhere near Taiwan. But uh, they, they, they will have to save face. This is the beginning of a exercise to enable both sides to get into a situation really neither one likes to be in. Now, it's some birthday party politics playing out in Karnataka. Congress MP Rahul Gandhi, who is on a two-day visit to the state, will be attending senior Congress leader Siddha Ramaya's 75th birthday celebrations in Devanagri today. Now, this is very significant because Siddha Ramaya completes about 50 years in politics and he's not had a birthday party of this magnitude. This comes in the backdrop of the ongoing crisis within the Karnataka faction over the chief ministerial candidate for the 2023 state polls. While the tussle continues, Siddha Ramaya's celebrations in Devangere is being seen as a show of strength by the former CM to strengthen his bid for the CM chair. And it is being seen as direct competition with uh, DK Shivkumar's party that we just saw recently. While the Karnataka Congress continues to deal with this crisis within the party, our managing editor, Zaka Jacobs, spoke to Chief Minister Basvaraj Bomai about the Congress's chances of becoming the top contender for the upcoming 2023 polls. Listen in to what the CM had to say. The opposition in your state, and you're well aware of this, whether it is the former Chief Minister, Mr. Sidramaya, whether it's the current uh, Congress Chief there, Mr. Shiv Kumar, uh, they have rated your uh, government's performance as very poor. In fact, Mr. Sidramaya went on to say that you are the weakest Chief Minister in the history of Karnataka. How do you counter this? How do you respond to this? And do you believe that there is a perception bias against you? <laughs> 